Hi everyone, it's Marianne. Welcome to A Very Merry Plant Month. And for today's video, I'm sharing with you my winter vacation plant care tips. Thank you so much for joining me today. And in last year's Vlogmas, I shared with you my top five winter plant care tips. And over the summer, I shared a video on how we can take care of our house plants while on vacation. So for this video, I wanna share with you my winter vacation plant care tips since I know a lot of us are traveling more this holiday season compared to last year. I know myself, I am traveling for two weeks right after Christmas. And as I mentioned in my summer vacation plant care video, if you're going to be gone for more than a week or two, then it's best to find someone to help you take care of your plants while you're gone. However, realistically, especially during this time of year, it's very difficult to find someone to help you take care of your plants since most people you know or trust to look after your plants probably also have travel plants or holiday plants themselves. Plus, unlike the summertime where house plants require a bit more frequent watering and more attention, during the winter, we can get away with neglecting our plants a little bit since they are in a dormancy period. So in my case, I'm not asking anyone to help me take care of my house plants and I know that's a risk and it's a risk I'm willing to take and I know I'll probably lose some plants by the time I get back. But in this video, I'm sharing with you what I plan to do to help me reduce those risks. And hopefully that will also help you if you're leaving your plants for the first time for a longer period of time as you go on your holiday travels. My first tip is to plan ahead of time. Setting up your plants to be left alone for a week or two requires some preparation and some trial and error. So you could use this time to test out any methods that I mentioned here in this video or any that you might think of to see if they actually work out for your plants and make adjustments before you actually leave them behind. So the next main concern is how we're gonna get our plants watered while we're gone. So there's many things that you can do to help with that. And in my summer plant care vacation video, I shared some tips, especially on how to DIY any self-watering system. But if you don't want to DIY anything since the holidays are already so busy to begin with, then you can get some self-watering planters for your plants that need it the most. This one is from Emerging Green. They sent this to me for free in exchange for my honest review. And this one comes in a set of five in either gray or white. I'll have my Amazon affiliate link for this product linked down in the description if you want to go check it out. And this is my second time working with Emerging Green. And what I love about their company is they are a sustainable small business. And a lot of their items are made from recycled materials like this one. So in another video, you've probably seen me repot my Monstera elbow into one of these planters. And now I'm going to be repotting a couple of my plants that need it. This one is a six inch pot and I have a couple of plants that dry out way too quickly, even during this period of time that I know will need access to water while I'm gone. So let's go ahead and do that. Here are the four plants that I'm transferring to the self-watering planters that I received from Emerging Green. Clockwise, the Syndapsus Jade Satin, Syngonium Elbow, Neon Pothos, and Manjula Pothos. What's important to remember in doing this over winter time, since repotting plants is not recommended during this time, is to not disturb the root ball of the plants as much as possible and essentially just switching out the pots that they're in. The slightly tricky part, but it's actually pretty easy, is making sure that the cotton wick is connected or in contact with the soil or the root wall of the plant so that the capillary action can properly take place. And as you can see, I tried four different methods and you can choose any of these methods. It would work fine. It's just a matter of preference. I do prefer the one that I employed with the neon pothos where I added an additional lining of a cotton cloth at the bottom of the planter. Not only that would help with capillary action, it will also prevent the soil from dropping into the water reservoir. So those are my plants that need to be converted into a self-watering planter so I don't have to worry about them while I'm gone. And again, if you want to check out those self-watering planters from Emerging Green, I'll have my Amazon affiliate link down in the description. But obviously, I can't convert all of my plants into self-watering planters. So for my smaller plants, I am putting them into a prop box like this one. So you can use any clear container with a clear lid like the one that I'm holding here. I just washed it so it's a little bit wet. And right here, I have my smaller plants that I watered last night. So their soil is wet but not overly saturated. And I'm going to be placing them in the pot box. So everyone has their own method in setting up their pot box. But 
be in a setup like this, I water my plants first, let them completely drain out, and then I place them in the pot box and then seal it. Some people would just directly and put some water in the pot box. If it works for them, great. But I don't employ that method because I don't want my plants sitting in water. Like, like with the plants that I'm putting in right now, I let them drain overnight just to make sure that the plants are not going to be sitting in water while they're in the pot box. Here they are and I could probably put a couple more in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the lid and make sure it is sealed tightly. I also have another pot box that I already have going on as you might have seen in my fall houseplant collection video. And that one, I rarely water it. I probably water it like once a month and the plants are doing okay. And they're pretty much self-sustaining because they create their own ecosystem. The most important thing for this setup to work is to make sure that it could be tightly closed so that it would create that condensation and would allow the water to cycle inside the box creating their own ecosystem as mentioned it's also important that the prop box you're using is in a clear container so that light could pass through it and we're going to talk about lighting a little bit more later and other methods that you could employ is using an indoor greenhouse like an ikea greenhouse cabinet or a grow tent but i know those can be pricey but if you already have one of those then do take advantage of them and put in as many plants as you can but of course there's only so much plants that you could put inside your indoor greenhouse or in your grow tent or in a pop box. So for those plants, I'll be watering them a couple of days before I leave. And in my case, especially most of those plants are my large floor plants anyways, then those plants don't really need watering as much. And I normally already water them only once or twice a month. So they'll be okay to be left alone for two weeks without watering. Next, let's talk about lighting for your house plants while they're gone. The easiest and most convenient way is to use grow lights on timers. So this way you can provide light for your house plants without worrying about turning them on, turning them off, they're on a schedule. But the downside to that is by giving your plants optimal lighting via grow light, it will also cause your plants to dry out a bit faster. In my situation, I'm only using time grow lights inside of my IKEA greenhouse cabinet where I know my plants could get away with not watering them for at least two weeks. And for the rest of my house plants, I'm just relying on natural light to provide light for them. I do have south and west facing windows. So even though the sun is not as strong during this time of year, that actually works in my favor while I'm gone. My house plants will still have access to light, but they won't dry out as quickly. So before I leave, I'll be cleaning out my windows, which is good practice, especially if you have north and east facing windows, which receive a lot less light compared to south and west facing windows. I'll also be cleaning the foliage of my plants, especially for any dust built up so that it doesn't get in the way of their photosynthesis. And if you have drafty windows, then this might be the time to insulate them even temporarily. And if you can not pull your plants a little bit away from the windows, so they don't get hit with a cold draft. And that segues to the third concern, temperature and humidity. So for us who are already experiencing colder temperatures, we might be starting to use our heaters. So it's best to keep our house plants away from those heater vents because of the drier air that it blows. And for most of us, we're probably using humidifiers to help increase humidity in our household, but there's no humidifier, at least that I know that would last for two weeks without refilling it. So yes, you want to have your humidifier filled before you leave, but know that it's only going to last for maybe a day or two for your houseplants. So the best thing to do for your houseplants is if they're not in pot boxes or in indoor greenhouses or grow tents, is to move them away from those heat vents as far as possible, especially for those plants that really require high levels of humidity and also to cluster your plants together. And that way they could create some relative humidity for themselves. And there are a lot of other humidity hacks that you can try. If you want, personally, I don't think they work that well, but maybe it's better than nothing. And lastly, pest issues. If you want, you can do a preventative treatment like spraying your plants with neem oil spray or any insecticidal soap of your choice. But for plants that are already experiencing any pest issues, it's best to isolate them as far away from your other plants as possible so that they don't infect other plants while you're gone. So those are my winter vacation plant care tips. I hope you find them helpful. 
I am filming this two weeks before I leave. So I'm testing out these methods myself and I will give you an update right before I leave and when I come back. But if you have any questions or if you have any other suggestions, please do leave them down in the comments. I will find them and others would find them very helpful. But thank you so much for watching. If you like it, just give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And now that it's plant mask, I come up with videos three times a week. And if you want to check out the rest of my plant mask videos, I have the playlist link up here and down description so you can watch them while you wait for my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful holiday season. Bye.